San Francisco, April 25th, 1945. The place selected by history to be the scene of the great adventure of our times. The attempt by men and women of freedom-loving nations to create a plan for world peace. This conference of the United Nations was conceived by the late Franklin Delano Roosevelt, one of the leading architects for a world security organization that could put an end to all wars on this earth. So to this city on the shores of the ocean named for peace came 1,300 representatives of the 46 United Nations, delegates from nations large and small and from many countries devastated by war. They came from near and far, from cultures ancient and modern. Through press and camera, men and women, soldiers and civilians the world over followed this meeting of the nations, praying for its success. The newsreel cameras were the eyes of the world, recording this historic endeavor. Batteries of motion picture lights, such as are used in Hollywood, made it possible to photograph the meetings of the delegates. Press conferences were held by many delegations to give the correspondents permissible information and background material. Here, Dr. T.V. Soong, acting premier of the Chinese Republic, replies to questions put to him by well-known journalists representing the millions who could not be present. And here, American Secretary of State Edward Statinius Jr. discusses problems of the conference, helping the press to understand the complexities of the delegates' daily business. The plenary sessions were held in San Francisco's War Memorial Opera House, dedicated to its sons who gave their lives to the cause of freedom during the First World War. The men and women with plans for world peace were in their places. The first day's session began when Mr. Statinius took his place on the speaker's platform. The Conference of the United Nations on International Organization is now convened. From the distant White House, the voice of Harry S. The Truman. President of the United States. At no time in history has there been a more important conference or a more necessary meeting than this one in San Francisco. You members of this conference are to be the architects of a better world. In your hands rests our future. If we do not want to die together in war, we must learn to live together in peace. Finally, Mr. Statinius, quoting Franklin Roosevelt, through whom America spoke when he said, We must and we shall fulfill the purpose for which we have come together. The four countries calling the conference, the United States, Great Britain, Russia, and China, through their spokesmen, pledged the support of their respective nations to the creation of a plan for lasting peace. Acting Premier Dr. T.V. Sung of China. At the very inception of the idea of the United Nations, President Chiang Kai-shek, advocated the early setting up of an executive council of the United Nations. Today, victory is the result of the cumulative efforts of collective security in action. Germany and Japan are to be kept powerless to do harm. The United States and the Soviet Union are now among the chief artisans of the new international order. B.M. Molotov of the Soviet Union. По поручению правительства Союза Советских Социалистических Республик, я в первых же словах. I should like to assure the conference that my country is devoted to the cause of setting up an organization to protect the peace. I wish you to know that the Soviet Union can be relied upon to protect the peace. Our peaceful nation, the Red Army, and our great Marshal Stalin are inflexibly supporting this great cause. This organization must have the necessary means for the military protection of the security of nations. Foreign Secretary 
Anthony Eden of Great Britain. No exaggeration to say that the work which we are starting on here in this meeting may be the world's last chance. Let me say how emphatically I agree with your words of a short while ago. Let us not, at this session, attempt too much. If we can now draw up a charter within the framework of our principles, the details can then be left to be filled in in the light of experience. We cannot afford to delay. This conference bears heavy responsibilities. It has also splendid opportunities. Let it seize them now. Let us do it with courage, modesty, and dispatch. Let us do it now. These men of many minds, eager to be of one mind, now turn their faces toward one of the greatest missions ever undertaken by mankind.